When we last left off, we discussed Beatmania, the five-key rhythm game that served as the origin of modern rhythm games, running for a solid chunk of years before finally being discontinued after Beatmania the final. In that video, I mentioned that we couldn't quite talk about why Beatmania had died because, well, there's a related series that potentially died for the same or similar reasons around the same time. By the early 2000s, there were not one, not two, but three versions of Beatmania running concurrently in Japanese arcades, all competing for the attention and money from Konami's player base. There was the aforementioned Beatmania, the original five-key DJ simulation game, Beatmania 2DX, the sequel series with two additional buttons and control setups with turntables on each side, and last but not least, Beatmania 3. Beatmania 3 is a bit weird to me because Beatmania 2DX already sort of existed as a sequel to Beatmania, what with having different button schemes and a sort of updated gameplay style, but Beatmania and 2DX were both still running, so what the hell was Beatmania 3 for? Well, that's what we're going to briefly look at today. So settle in for a short history on one of Konami's weirdest game series, Beatmania 3. As a side note, if you haven't watched the Beatmania video before this one, I'd recommend it as I'm going to reference some parts of the Beatmania timeline that I covered in that video. The first version of Beatmania 3 was released on March 8th, 2000, just two months after Beatmania Complete Mix 2. This was also just three months after Beatmania 2DX Third Style. Where Beatmania 2DX features new gameplay in the form of two additional buttons and one player side being dedicated to the left side turntable instead of the right, Beatmania 3, by comparison, retains the Beatmania gameplay despite coming out after 2DX. Also, good lord, keeping Beatmania, Beatmania 2DX, and Beatmania 3 separate is gonna be a nightmare. Okay, here we go. The only major change to the game in Beatmania 3 was in the form of a foot pedal on the cab. This was used for two features. First was that some specific charts of Beatmania 3 have a chart that used the foot pedal, though this is not true for every song. The other feature of the foot pedal is that it can be used as an effector to add effects to the music while playing a song, as Beatmania was still leaning heavily into the DJ aesthetic and feel at this time. There was also a modifier added to the game that allowed you to assign the foot pedal to one of the five keys, presumably to assist in its gameplay. But that's the extent of the changes. The rest of the game is just 5-key. It seems really bizarre to me that they would make another 5-key game after releasing 2DX that mostly retains the features of the original version, but what do I know? Beatmania 3 did have some stuff going for it in that it ran on an updated cab with some hardware improvements. It allowed for better quality animations and visuals, and you can genuinely see the difference looking at the footage. The game had song selection music previews, which the original Beatmania didn't have due to memory limitations. The machine had a headphone jack and also a 3.5 inch floppy drive. Apparently, if you brought a Windows formatted floppy disk to the arcade, you could use this to save scores. How wild is that? I know we have it good nowadays, what with card readers on the modern Vimani machines, but can you imagine just throwing a floppy disk in your backpack when you headed to the arcade? That is retro in the funniest way to me. It did have a few new gameplay features, like clear grades, probably not unlike a modern Vimani game having something like hard clear. Beatmania 3 featured red grade and blue grade clears, where a red grade was awarded when clearing a song with 95% or higher score. This would lead to unlocks by clearing certain songs with a red grade. It also apparently featured some charts with a hybrid difficulty, and the only other rhythm game I know of with this feature is Taiko, which came out in 2001. Kinda interesting. The chart would change difficulty to be easier or harder depending on how you performed in certain parts of the song. I think this is a really interesting concept that more rhythm games could explore, especially when dealing with new players. It also still featured good judgments breaking your combo at this time. I guess at this point Konami really just couldn't decide whether they wanted goods to break your combo or not. Now, where Beatmania 3's history starts to get weird is that this was actually the only standalone game in the Beatmania 3 series. All the other games from here on were known as append versions and were basically extensions of the associated Beatmania mix being released at that time. Almost like a deluxe version, you might say. 
I personally find this really funny because the DX in Beatmania 2DX is supposed to mean deluxe, but honestly, these Beatmania 3 versions feel like the deluxes of the Beatmania 5 key mixes. The information about the append mixes for Beatmania 3 is pretty sparse, so let's run through them quick and take a look at what info and footage there is on them. First up is Beatmania 3 Append Core Remix. This mix came out one month after Beatmania Core Remix and contains all the songs from Core Remix, but also the songs from Complete Mix, giving this game quite a hefty amount of content. They added some of the features from Core Remix as well, like the 1P Center modifier to allow you to use the one player turntable and the two player buttons, and they removed the good combo break in this version as well. But here's my question. Why was this needed? This was literally all the stuff I could find about this version that was actually different. Not even entirely different either, like they added some foot charts and the visuals are better than Core Remix, but honestly it still looks very similar to Beatmania 3's original version. My question that started to form around this point in my research was, why does this exist? Was this hardware change really enough to create a third game that would be inevitably competing with itself? What's weirder is that from here on, the versions almost retain exact feature parity with Beatmania's regular versions. The next two versions, Append 6th Mix and Append 7th Mix, were effectively the same as their counterpart 5 key version from what I can tell, minus some footnote charts and some newly added longer versions of some of the songs. They were even released on the exact same day as the normal Beatmania mix. It could totally be the lack of information on these mixes, but I'm just left scratching my head wondering what the point of these Beatmania 3 releases even were. Something else I noticed is that just in general, past Beatmania 3's original release, there is very little info about these mixes, even on RemyWiki. These games just exist in some weird void of Beatmania, kind of unknown and forgotten. Even Beatmania 3 The Final has barely any documentation, though I have to assume it's similar to Beatmania The Final in that it was essentially a final compilation mix. Beatmania 3 The Final came out one month after Beatmania The Final, and that was the very last 5 key release. So let's talk Beatmania, Beatmania 2DX, and Beatmania 3. Keep in mind, due to a lack of documentation and info I could find, a lot of this section is speculation on my part. If I had to take a guess, judging by the game having its own first version, Beatmania 3 may have been intended from the start as its own original series that was going to have more differentiating features, but either due to underperformance or high expenses due to new hardware and running three Beatmania series at once, ended up simply getting lumped in with Beatmania for a majority of its life. Minus the standalone release, Beatmania 3 was pretty unnecessary and only served to increase the costs and production complexity of Beatmania in its closing years. I'd wager Beatmania 3 potentially even had an effect on 5 key coming to an end as a whole. If you want to know why Beatmania 3 died, well, it's the same reason as original Beatmania, most likely. At the point just before Beatmania the final releasing, Konami was maintaining Beatmania, Beatmania 2DX, and Beatmania 3 all at the same time. At this point, it had become known that Beatmania 2DX had become the more popular game, and was also honestly a more proper sequel with differentiating features and song lists. My guess is that Konami decided the time was right to shelve 5 key as a whole, with the games underperforming relative to 2DX, and with the two games essentially being the same, it was probably a two birds with one stone type of moment. And so, that was the end. Beatmania the final released, ending the Beatmania series, and a month later, Beatmania 3 the final released, marking the end of 5 key Beatmania as a whole. Beatmania 2DX would go on to become one of Konami's most popular series and is still around today, coming up soon on its 30th release. While 5 key may be gone, the Beatmania series has been nothing short of a powerhouse in the rhythm gaming sphere, though Beatmania 3 remains a somewhat forgotten, maybe unnecessary entry into the original 5 key series that may have had negative effects on its lifespan overall. With Beatmania 2DX pushing on further into the future, we add Beatmania and Beatmania 3, the 5 key rhythm game carrying the legacy of the genre, to our list of dead rhythm games. Thanks for watching. Check out my Twitter and my Twitch, links are in the description below. You can also check out my Patreon if you want to support my content. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.